So guys, let's just start by saying, I am useless. Now for the last year, this engine has sat here pretty much untouched and neglected. While I've been out gallivanting and chasing fame in the Land Rover community, this project has sat to a side basically untouched and I haven't done a single thing with it. Now I have a good reason for that. One, I was trying to find a transmission for this and they're extremely hard to find. If you remember from the previous video on this build, the first gear on this transmission was completely ruined where the kickstarter had burst through and breached into the transmission housing and damaged the first unit. Oh no. Now I wanted to replace the whole transmission on this just because it would be a good job. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is my boss. She decides when I go to work, where I go to work, when I eat, sleep and how much time I spend in the shed. I don't even get me started on my employer. That being said, I have a few things now that I want to do to this engine. Including a decompression for the cylinder head. But I've picked up a new project recently. It's a 1985 YZ490. And now to get started on that project, I think it's about time we finish this one. So we'll crack on with reinstalling the new transmission in this, get these two half cases back together, and then we can flip it over and start doing things such as the crutch basket and the two crank seals, which I'm also waiting on to arrive. But all the other bearings have been replaced. There'll be all new bearings, all new seals in this all around. It's pretty much everything new on this engine. So we get started on this. And that's just a little, little bit of heat. Just 80 degrees Celsius. I didn't even warm it up to 80 degrees Celsius. That's probably a lot less. It's basically, I can still touch that bearing with my finger and it just feels warm. It doesn't take much to get those to expand, just enough to get that crank through. If you go heating it until it turns blue, you've got a problem. And ideally avoid a naked flame. A little heat gun like this is ideal. It's amazing how much they expand because before I could spin that bearing and it had a a loose, rattly feel to it, and just that little bit of warmth, and I can feel the bearing is stiffen up slightly, so just because there's such a tight tolerance in there, I can feel when I'm turning the bearing, it feels like a much tighter fit. It's enough talking. I use these cases for separating all my parts. Real, real handy tool, the Dewalt cases. You can see in each tray, and I got more of these, pretty much every bike has a tray or two like this for separating all these parts. You can see I've got the selector forks there, the new transmission, the old transmission with the chunks missing out of it. Let me see if I can focus on this for you. So if you remember, that's the gear we took out. Missing a few, uh, few bits of metal there. But yeah, these cases, Dewalt cases, very handy. To have around keeps everything nice and organized and keeps it clean until you're ready to start reassembling it i did say in one of the previous videos on this project that i was looking to buy a nice compact milling machine so i bought a bridge port i've also been building my tool base such as a newer bigger lathe so i can tackle projects like the ones in the upcoming videos that being said i think it's time we revisit this project now the last thing i've done to this engine was repair the damaged part on the side here. You can see where the clutch actuator has been repaired now. Originally, this was all missing. If you go back to the TIG welding aluminium video, it's come out pretty nice now. It's pretty much unnoticeable. Now, one of the other things I had to do was weld the inside here of the case. The Kickstarter had managed to come around. The dog on the Kickstarter had come around and it had burst a small hole in the case here, which basically got caught up in the first gear. Just a quick recap on the story. It destroyed the transmission. I'm surprised it didn't crack the case and basically split it in two. But you can see what happened to the Kickstarter here. So this gear is meant to be on here like this. And then this dog is on behind. And that dog is basically press fit onto there and it's never to be removed again. What had happened is this dog had spun around on the shaft 
hit a hole in the case here and that's where the damage started you can see it split the dog completely so this shaft is basically toast so it's very hard to weld and get right or machine so your best bet is basically just to buy a new shaft now one of the things that has happened to this case which i hear is a pretty common thing on these it 490s and yz 490s is where this shaft enters the case here it's managed even though it fits it's managed to kind of leave an oval shaped hole inside in the case this being hardened steel and that being a soft cast aluminium the two don't really go well together it's not really a kind of a long-term solution so now that this is an oval shaped hole there is a bit of play i mean you could possibly put this back together and say no more about it and pray that it doesn't happen again but i'm not happy with the way it is there's a lot of friction there once i put any pressure on that shaft at all which there will be when i'm kickstarting it there's a lot of friction there and i suspect that this is half of the problem as to why that shaft didn't return fully once we had released the kickstarter so the kickstarter once you kick it it should spring back up into place and you know the dog, the, this gear should slide back out of the way and the engine is running from there for some reason this gear did not slide back out of the way whether there was no tension on the spring or i'm not sure or whether there was a little bit of friction on that shaft and it didn't go all the way up but something happened that caused that gear to engage while the engine was running not just while it was running but while the person was riding while the previous owner was actually riding the bike and basically that's what caused the dog to spin around and break a hole in the case so now today's job is to clean up that hole i've already removed one millimeter from that surface which i've done pretty much a year ago and walked away from it because i didn't have the tools to bore this out cleanly back then but now that i have a milling machine a boring head and a few other tools i'm finally equipped to do a proper job on this so it's time to remove this put it onto the milling machine and bore this out so i can insert one of these bushings So I've just been dialing this in. It was actually sitting up on one of those uh, guides underneath. We did have to move it and reset again, but you see now we've got it very, very close. We're locked in, we're clamped down. Pretty much good to go with that, I think. that down in there there we go all I need to do now is just take a little bit off the top of that and we're good to go so now that we have our bush in there turned down to the correct height and uh, in reinstalled in the case the next thing to do is install the new kickstart mechanism now this is an entirely new next kickstart mechanism I wouldn't even bother trying to repair the old one this shaft is hardened steel that's cast out of steel is it's just not trying to it's not worth repairing and you know the fear of this breaking again it just wouldn't be worth the risk so an entirely new kickstart mechanism here you can see this little retaining clip here at the bottom goes into that slot here i'm just going to drop it in pull the tension spring around into its hole and that's it there you go that's ready to go just kind of hard So in terms of fabrication or repairs and machining on this case, I think that's pretty much it. Next step is to give this a good clean, remove all the old bearings. I think we're finally ready to start reassembling this engine with new parts.
to know that at this point we're ready to stick on our gasket or our um, sealant. I'm just going to degrease that edge. Oh, by the way, I don't think you can actually buy a gasket, just in case anyone's wondering why I'm using a, a sealant on this. I don't think you can actually get a center gasket. I don't think they came with a center gasket. But even if they did, you know, if you were to stick a gasket in there, no matter how thin it is, you are spreading the cases apart. And I suppose this transmission is designed, its tolerances are designed for gasket sealer rather than an actual paper gasket. So even if you do manage to find one, if it wasn't on there originally, I wouldn't put it on. So just two minutes ago, the postman knocked on the door and delivered two crankshaft seals. I wasn't expecting them today, but that's great. So I'll put these in now while I'm here. retaining clip but I cannot see that thing falling out that was very very tight usually they're not that tight that one took a lot of persuasion to get in there but you gotta be so careful when you're installing them if you go too far I mean chances are you gotta split the case to get them back out because there's no race on the inside where you can kind of press the seal up to and that's it it can go too far so yeah <laughs> it's not something you want to do last after doing all this hard work and putting it together and then drive that seal home too far and then have to split it again. So, just you want to take it easy going all around it pretty much. So now that I've got the bottom ends pretty much together, all my bearings and seals are in place, I'm ready to start putting on things like the crotch assembly and the cylinder, piston and cylinder etc. But before I do that, I just want to transfer this engine, you can see it's mounted on the bolts for the crutch cover. I'm just going to change the way it's held in the engine stand slightly to make it more rigid and also to allow me to bolt on things like the crutch cover. So now that I've got the engine mounted to the proper mount in the engine stand, I'm ready to start reassembling everything on this side, including the clutch. Now luckily enough, the clutch that was on this bike, it's in very good condition. The basket doesn't seem to have any notches on it or anything. The plates look like they're fairly new. So all I'm going to do with this is dismantle it, pop it in the ultrasonic cleaner, clean everything down, and I'm going to use this again. So while that's happening, I'm just going to pop this crankshaft gear on here, and a few other little bits that I can crack on with while it's cleaning. Have a look at this for a second. Can you see inside that gear there? Can you see that pushing? Looks a lot like the one we installed for the kickstart shaft, isn't it? If they could put it in their gears, why couldn't they put it in the case? So one of the things I had done to this case about a year ago was remove this stud. Now I painfully removed this stud. It was probably the most stuck stud I've ever seen. And I regret it to this day. The reason I've done it is because I thought it'd be nice to get some titanium studs for this. Same as the CR500. I've got titanium bolts pretty much all around. On the studs, on the head, all the bolts for the cases, the clutch cover, everything. So once I had this stud removed, I then found out that you cannot buy titanium studs for this. And not only that, you can't even buy original studs anywhere. So I mean, I had to wait a long time before I could find a stud come up on eBay and when it came up, I think there was only one of them for sale. So my plan is to reinstall that stud that I regretfully removed 
so we can crack on with the build. So here's the piston I'll be using. It's a 0.5mm over Wiseco. Now originally I had actually ordered an original piston because I kind of like to stick to original pistons with uh, air-cooled bikes but I ordered a 0.25 over originally and uh, the cylinder didn't clean up at that which is why I had to go for the 0.5 over and I couldn't find an original so anyways I went for the 0.5 over in the Wiseco a lot of guys run these and have no issues I guess it's just me and paranoia and you know air-cooled and you know hotter on one side and isn't the other I guess with the water-cooled bikes maybe there's more even heat distribution but that being said Guys run wise cores every day with absolutely no issues. They run some crazy power through these with great results. So I guess it's just me and an old myth. And an old myth that I must have heard somewhere. Oh, that is just beautiful. I love the little bag they give us. Absolutely beautiful. Cylinder's on and looking good. I'm gonna start with our clutch basket now. She's out the ultrasonic cleaner and she's looking spotless. Well, that's such a good tool then. It could be cleaning away the parts that you need next. Just brings them up spick and span. No oil left on them, no grease. Just perfect. I'm well rested and I'm ready to crack on with this. We just pop the head off. One of the next things I want to do is just install these studs. I removed a few of them recently. So I'm just going to reinstall them and we can install our new head gasket and crack on with that head installation. So I just had a route around in the parts that I have for this bike. I have a whole bunch of new parts here. In fact, this is just one bag out of a big box of Yamaha parts just for this IT490. All replacement nuts, screws, washers, everything. So this is the replacement head nuts that I ordered. We'll stick them on. You know what, actually, it's good that we're getting to do this now with one of my um, decompression valves, my decompression valve mod installed. So you can see that nut just underneath that decompression valve there. It's going to be very hard to even get a spanner on it, and even with the fin on the front. Some of these heads, they don't have that fin in the, uh, in, the, in the center here, so you could probably get a spanner underneath. But more than likely, you're going to have to screw that out to get to that bolt. Once that's removed then it's a bit tricky but I can get to that nut. Oh wow. I had no idea those head nuts were uh, stainless. I'm actually excited to get this head torqued down and see this decompression valve working. So our head is torqued down to a 16 foot pounds. But you can see here now, you can hear the, de uh, the decompression, the hole releasing the compression there.
And the good thing about it is, it doesn't allow all the compression to just escape, you know, even without the, uh, the decompression valve in there. The hole is quite small, so you still have a lot of compression. When you're kicking this over, you're going to be kicking it over fast enough for the, a little bit of compression to escape, but not all of it, to the point where you don't have enough compression to fire up. So that's without the valve, you can hear the air escaping through the hole there. When I screw in the valve... I just, just about be able to get a spanner on that there. See, wow. That's on the downstroke. And there's your compression. You get a socket on that for a demonstration. The compression valve open. The compression valve closed. I'll release it on the compression. I'm happy with that. She's working nicely. I think on the next one I do, I'll sink the valve down just a little bit further because it is a little bit tricky. I was expecting it to be, but. A little bit tricky for my liking, it's okay for me, but if it's something that I'm going to do for other people, I'm going to lower that valve down inside between the fins a little bit more, just to make it a little bit easier to get to that nut when you're tightening the head down, when you're talking the head down. So yeah, apart from that, functionality wise it's working perfect, so I'm happy with that. myself a new genre of music which seems to really just click with me it's kind of like a, a dark american country rock kind of vibe i don't know that music and working on this 83 it 490 really makes me feel like i was there That pretty much sums up the rebuild of this engine. The only thing left to do now is install the clutch cover, put it in the frame, fill it up with fuel and kick it like it stole something from me. If there's any of you out there who are interested in this decompression valve, feel free to message me on my Facebook or my Instagram. It's also Keep It Big Boy. I'll put links in the description below. But I do offer this as a service for guys if you're interested in this for your bike. Now, if you want to see more about this valve, I will have a dedicated video for it coming soon. But that being said guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I wish you all a happy new year, we'll see you soon.